Hello everyone again, and welcome to Data Engineering Camp. I'm glad to have you here, even though we cannot meet physically. Finally, it's weekend and uh, we can do uh, what we like. And for me, it's sharing some knowledge that comes from the data path, which I've started some time ago. And I would like to share the knowledge I've accumulated and I'm glad to share it. And the fact that you are attending this, um, this, this camp, this presentation means that you already also started this data, data uh, journey, data path, or you want to start it. Um, uh, and I would say that this um, data journey is quite interesting, quite long, and I would even say that it has no finish because it's the, the universe of data is so, so big, and you can choose any path you want, and like data engineering, uh, data analysis, uh, predictive analytics, prescriptive analytics, machine learning, analytics engineering, and so on and so on. Uh, but of course, because uh, but of course before starting any journey you would like to have a kind of a basic fundamental of knowledge which will help you to navigate uh, through this um, through this journey and one of these fundamentals i would say is sql and uh, uh, from what i know you had already a course a course with uh, Darinella previous during the previous weekend where she I would say she laid the, the, the foundations for, for SQL, the basics for SQL. And now um, during uh, this course, this presentation, we will go uh, to the, we will do the next step, which is um, seeing how the join works, how the SQL join works. And we'll talk, uh, we'll talk about that today. So uh, you already know I'm a data analyst. My name is, by the way, Alexandru. You might say, call me Alexandru, Alex, as, as, as you want. So um, what we will, uh, what, uh, what shall, we, shall we talk about today? So I would say that we should start with uh, what is join. And then I think uh, types of, of join will be fine too. And also uh, this join has some, some traps. So let's see what are those traps. And the last but not the least, of course, we should uh, follow some best practices. They are quite simple, but if you follow them, they make, make your life easier when you are using, uh, when you are using SQL join. So what is join? Uh, probably, you used it before maybe, or maybe someone of your colleagues asked about you this, maybe they asked if you know anything about SQL and if you ever used SQL join because they have some questions about that. Uh, so uh, let's see what is join and what uh, when it is needed. The join actually is used when you need to combine, uh, when you need to combine uh, data from two tables. You want to match data that is in one table and the part of the data is in another table. So um, that's the situation when you might need this um, to use the SQL join. Uh, what the join uh, SQL join is in, in itself, it's a, it's a SQL statement that takes two inputs and these two inputs are usually one table. Uh, two, ta one, uh, two tables, or it can be one result set and a, a, a table. So let's uh, let's look at the at, at the ex at the example we have here. So, for example, let's say uh, an HR department asks you to to provide you to provide them a list of persons and also the job titles of those persons. But uh, this information is placed into in two different tables. So in this case, uh, you will have to, to use join. And this is one of the simplest examples. 
So we have this person table and we have an employee table where we have job titles. So we need to combine uh, data from these two tables and to provide one, one list to, to the uh, HR department. And in that case, we use join. And the usually join is done on, on some um, common values, which if they match, then um, we have uh, the join results. But uh, about the process, but about how it works and about details, we'll, we'll talk in further slides. But that's uh, generally what is a join and when it is needed. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's see what's actually the order of the join, the order of execution uh, of join within the query. As you can see, probably you know already this order. Maybe Daniela even explained you about the SQL order execution. And uh, as you see, the this query order execution starts with from clause. And if we have join, then this join will be executed within from clause. So it means that it first will take uh, the tables, which we give, which we provide them from clause. Oh, at least one table. And if we have joined, then it will be a second table. So it will take those tables and start with, with this, with um, accessing the tables and see if you specify one table or you want to join multiple tables. And in join, there is on clause, which is also processed during this, this join. So it's good to know uh, the order because it's easier to understand and um, uh, maybe uh, identify any traps of the, of the join or understand why it shows you certain results in a certain way when you understand this uh, order clause. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, we have probably, you know, uh, if you worked with join that there are more types of join, different types of join. And here in the image, you can see six type of joins, but of course, through this presentation, we will go through more joins. I will show you some other joins, which are not in this image. Uh, some, some specific joins I would call so them, and we will go and see how those works. I would um, I would start with um, in my view that that there are three fundamental types of join and these these are cross join inner join and outer join uh, and uh, later I will explain why I started with these three with these three uh, joins and one why it's important to to understand on uh, these three fundamental joins and then go to other, other types of join which we have. So let's see. Uh, so um, let's, uh, let's start with cross, uh, let's uh, see what, what cross join actually does. The cross join uh, applies one logical query processing phase, which is a Cartesian product, which means that it takes all rows from one table and all rows from another table and uh, makes a Cartesian product, which means that if you have in one table, for example, two rows and in another table, four rows, it just will take the first row and match it with all four rows from the second table, then take the second row and match from, uh, with all other four tables from the right table, uh, from, uh, with all our other rows from right table. So it will be in total eight rows. The inner join is actually uh, a kind of more advanced join comparing to Cartesian, uh, comparing to cross join, which is the simplest one. Uh, he in the joins takes the Cartesian product of, of, of the two tables and then uh, filters rows using on, on close. I will, I will show you how it works further in the slides, but as a general, uh, inner join includes two phases, two logical, uh, two logical uh, 
uh, processing phases. One is Cartesian product and then filtering uh, rows using on clause. And uh, the third, uh, third fundamental type of join is auto join. It applies the same two logical processing phases that applies in a join. Mm -hmm. And also uh, it has a third uh, phase, which is adding outer rows. Of course, everything this I will show you in, in further slides and you will understand it better. But um, the, main, the main idea here for these three fundamental types of joints is that um, we have uh, three phases uh, of logical processing of, of a join and the, the cross join has only one phase, which is Cartesian product. Inner join has two phases, which is Cartesian product. And then it filters rows on clause on using on clause and outer rows and outer joints has three logical processing phases. First is Cartesian product. Second is this uh, uh, using on clause. And the third one is adding outer rows. And now let's go in more details uh, to see how, how each of these, um, how each of these join works. So here we have a cross join. As I said before, cross join is the is the simplest type of join and how it works. Uh, let's see on this example. Uh, we have an example. Uh, for example, we have a situation when a regional a regional store manager asks you asks you for a list of stores and products delivered there. So we have to make a list where we would, we would have store name and product name, and we know the, and uh, we have. And we know that uh, these products were delivered to these stores, and uh, we know we have to have a result where we have stores and the products that are available that were delivered and now are available there. So uh, we have a table with stores. We have two stores: novelty bikes and nice bikes, and we have a product table with four. For, for products, actually it's the same product, but it has different sizes. And these four products, and this product with four, four sizes were delivered to each of these store. And what cross join does is uh, it takes, for example, this, uh, this row from store table and joins it with this row from product table, from first row, second row, third and fourth row. And here you can see the result for this first row. We have four rows. Now, uh, the next step it does, it takes this row for nice, uh, for store, uh, for store which is named nice bikes. And it goes again through each of these uh, row from product table. And you can see the result here. We have four, four tables, so uh, four rows, sorry. So in total, we will have eight uh, rows which results from this, uh, from this uh, cross join product. So it's just a multiplication between the rows and you can see it, for example, if we have in store table M, M rows in here we have two and in product table, we have N rows here N would be four, then we multiply two by four and we know that we should have eight, uh, eight rows in the result set. So um, that's, that's how the cross join works. And that's a situation where you might need such type to use such type of join. But actually in my practice, I used it very seldom um, because usually in business, you don't have only two rows in a table or four rows. Usually you can have thousand rows. Uh, 10,000 rows or million rows. So if, for example, I here would have 1,000 rows and here 1 million. So if 1 million, uh, 1,000 multiplied by 1 million, it will be 1 billion of rows. It's quite a lot. It's, it's huge. And it will, um, it will consume a lot your operational memory. That's why it's usually not used. It's very seldom used. And actually the insights from such kind of joints are not quite useful. 
so it's very very seldom used but we should know how it works because uh, it's mm, it's it has this cartesian product logical phase on which is on which all other joints are based so let's see how in a join works uh, in a join um, combines uh, records also from two tables but it shows it it combines only records where there is matching between the rows uh, between the values from uh, uh, left left table and right table uh, and it's also based on two logical uh, query logical query processing phases one is cartesian product between the two inputs and next phase is uh, filtering uh, uh, out rows that do not have matching values let's see how how it actually works by looking at this example so again uh, hr department asks you for a list of first and last names and their and their job titles and for this we have two tables uh, we have person table and the employee table in person table we have first and last name of the persons and we in the employee table we have these here the the job titles and we have to combine those and we have one column in each table that have uh, common values which we can which we can use to match uh, the rows between the two tables so uh, what how 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 the inner join is processing or joining these two tables uh, it uh, as as you can see here in the in the inner join script we we use this inner join and we define the tables we want to use person table and human res uh, and employee table and uh, we define in on clause uh, a predicate this is a predicate where we mention the condition the joint condition which is a business entity id from uh, employee table this one should equal to business entity id from person table so this is the join condition and uh, this is the inner um, specifies that this it means that this uh, these values from these two columns should be matching so what's the process behind it uh, the process goes like that actually it not does only a matching first it will do a cross join that i explained before it will take for example, row one and match with all nine rows, then row two match with all nine rows. One, we have the result of the cross join, then it applies this uh, inner and uh, this predicate, which means that it from that cross join result set, it takes only the columns, the rows, sorry, which have matching values. And uh, let's see here uh, which. For which we have matching values so for example here we have nine nine rows and in the result we in the result set we have seven rows so we can see that for example one and one are matching two and two matching four and four matching and so on and here starts uh the first value which is not uh, this one actually also exists here so uh for example, this value is not is not existing in the employee table. So uh, here, the inner join filters out that this this row. So we do not see on this this part which is coming from this table. We do not see anymore this this record. It was filtered out by inner join. Then we have another record which we. With, uh, with this business entity ID, which is not existing in this part. Um, that's why it's filtered out, out also by inner join, because the condition is this that it should be equal to, it should have an equal value in this table on the right side. And it does not, so it is filtered out by this on clause. 
The same thing happens for employee table. We see that we have the here one record. Uh, let's start with this, this two, 202 value, which is not existing in this business entity ID column. So it filters out the whole record because, and sorry, this one, the whole record, because it, it's not existing. It, it does not have matching value here. And the same happens for this, um, for this uh, value, 213, which is not existing here. So as a result, we have seven records from here and seven records from, from this table. And those that did not match were excluded. And we have only, uh, only the records which have values that are matching from this column with this column. So we have only the persons which have, uh, we have here the, a list of persons which uh, also have assigned a job title. So no, no uh, persons here in this result set that would not have uh, a job title in the employee table and vice versa. There is no, no uh, job title shown here, which would uh, not have a person assigned to it. But you will understand this better when we will go into the left and right join. So I would say that inner join is one of the, one of the most used join. Uh, I, I, I can see it quite, quite often uh, used in the scripts, uh, in SQL scripts. And by the way, uh, if, if, you, if I go, for example, uh, uh, back here, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no, let's go back to inner join. Uh, probably you know that uh, there, there is, you, you might know inner join as inner outer join. Uh, that outer part is actually, um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not necessarily to write the inner outer join because anyway, it will do the, the inner outer join. And it makes the code, uh, it may, when you do, do exclude this outer part, it, it's less text and it's easy usually to read. That's why I just didn't use that just for you to know and understand that in outer join and inner join, it's, it's the same. Okay, let's, um, let's see now how outer joins work. Sorry, actually here outer join cannot be. So uh, let's see how outer joins works. Uh, here we have the outer join actually have three, three flavors of, of join. It's left join, right join, and full outer join. And uh, what's the main difference between the outer joins and the inner joins is that um, the outer join will have one table preserved or two table, uh, one table with all rows preserved or two tables with all rows preserved. For example, here on the, for the left outer join, you can see that here it will take uh, rows, all rows from table A and only matching values or, or rows from B where the, we have matching values between table A and table B. And the same, uh, and for the right outer join, it works vice versa. It preserves all the rows from table B and uh, it takes from table A only the rows where we have matching values between table B and table A. And full outer join takes all outer, outer rows, all, all rows from table B and table A, either those are matching or not. And as, as as discussed before, the outer join has uh, three logical uh, three logical uh, processing phases, and these are Cartesian Cartesian product, uh, then filtering, uh, then uh, keeping the rows that are matching and keeping the preserved rows. And now uh, you will see for each each type of outer join, how it actually works. So let's, let's see. 
Okay. Here we have the left outer join. And let's see how it works. So left outer join, uh, I would say that we start with the, with the example and then uh, it, it will be much clearer when we go through example and if you have question, you can ask me. So again, HR departments asks for a list of first and last names of all people registered at the company. So here in, in the person table, we have, have all people registered, registered at the company. And, uh, uh, and they say that, and here we have some people that might not have uh, a job title or might not be an employee. So it might not have a matching in employee table and you will see it here in the result, in the result, in the result set. So we have person table, we have employee table. Again, we specify here that it's left join, which means that it preserves all the rows, all the rows from this table. So it will, in the result set, we will have all these rows. So at minimum in the result set, we have, we should have nine rows. And then we also specify that we would like to have uh, matching, we will like to have from employee table rows that are matching uh, value rows that have matching values with the, uh, with the person table. And here you can see we again make this join based on business entity ID, which have common values with business entity ID for, for employee. Actually business entity ID, it's from, from, from the database I used, it, it, it's an ID for, for persons which are registered within the company and they are used uh, in, in, in various tables in order to connect those to, to person table, like he employee connect with the person. So uh, how, how left join works? Uh, it takes all the rows from here, from person table, and we can see that all those are here. We, we have them here. And then in this part on, in this on clause, where we specify that those should business entity ID should make the values from business entity ID column should match between these two tables. Uh, should be equal. And we see that it shows all the values that are equal in the employee table. And for those which we do not have, uh, for example, we have this 293 business ID in person table, but it's not existing in employee table. Uh, it will show just no. It means that there are no inform there, there is no information for such ID business ID in employee table and the same happens for this 295 ID business ID it doesn't have any information in the employee table and what and actually what happens with the, and let's see what happens with the business IDs that exists in employee table, but do not exist in person table. We can see that those do not appear here because we have this uh, criteria that those should match. And that's why uh, these uh, have no match here. They, they are filtered out and they are not here in the result set. So finally, uh, in this result set, we will have all the rows from the person table from the left table, which is preserved table. That's why we call it left join because it's preserving this left side. And the right table from the employee table, we have only values that are matching with the, with the values from the left table. So this is how left join works. And when you do this uh, left join, I usually I would, uh, after doing this, uh, this left join, I would uh, count how many rows I have in the person table. And after I join, I count how many rows I have in the result set. And it should be either, at minimum, it should be the same. 
nine, we can have more if he would have duplicates for some rows, but at minimum it should have in the join result set, you should have the same number of rows as here, not less, I would say, not less. It can be more, but not less. Yeah, in, in, in case it can be only more, it can be, for example, in the result set, you can have less rows only when you apply where close. But uh, that we will discuss in uh, further in the presentation and you will understand why. Okay, then let's move to the next type of join, which is a second flavor of outer join. And actually it has the same basics. It has the same processes behind. The only difference is that the table it preserves uh, while on the left join it, as it comes from its name, it preserved the left side table. Here it preserves the right side of the table. And again, the chart department wants to see the list of all jo job titles, including uh, and corresponding first and last name, and include all job titles, even if those do not have some persons assigned to it. So uh, let's see now how it works. Uh, we have this person table with all the persons and employee table. And now we have uh, a bit different situation. So uh, it, in, the join, in the right join result set, we have all the rows, all the rows from this table, from employee table, which is on the right side. And you can see that these business entity IDs from here are uh, transferred here and all of those are here. And from the left table, which is person table, we have only rows where the values matched. And you can see, for example, 2011 uh, or 211 uh, matched with 211 and this 38 to, to business and 81 also matched. So those are here and 202 business ID from the right table uh, have no corresponding ID or the same value here. That's why we have no for, for this part, for the left part. And now we have another situation when we have job titles, all job titles, but we can see that not all job titles uh, have a person assigned. So probably there are no, no one, there is open position for this, uh, there is open position for this uh, job title and maybe they are looking for, for a person to, to, imp, uh, to, uh, to employ for this position. And here, uh, how it looks in the right join script. Again, we specify the fields we want to see. We specify the tables we want to join. That's the person table and the employee table. And also we specify that we want to preserve the right side table, which is this one. And in on clause, we specify that we want that the business entities ID uh, should be the same, that they should match. And again, the process behind this uh, right join is that it takes all the rows, it takes all the rows from, from, the, from the person table, from the employee table, it makes a cross join between them. Then the next step is that it preserves this table. It preserves all, as you can see, it preserves all the rows from the right table. So it keeps all the rows here. And then it applies that uh, the third stage when it uh, filters out values that are not matched. And this is uh, done by this on clause or by this predicate where it says that uh, the value should match between business entities IDs from both tables. So whenever we do any join, there, there are these three, three phases, except, uh, except cross join and inner join. Okay, and uh, any questions here? And the last flavor of, of 
outer join is full outer join. And here you can see that we have again the same two tables, but the difference between right and left uh, join joins is that the full join, full outer join, it preserves tables from both sides, which means it will preserve a table from left side and from right side. And here you can see the in the join result set that it takes all the rows from here, from the right table, and it takes all the rows from here. And when, for example, for these two rows, we don't have matching in the right table, it will show null, null values for this side because there is no data for, for these business entities IDs. And for, for example, for these 213 and 202, there are no matching in the left table in the person table so it will show null values uh, what i would say from my experience i use the the most often i use left join uh, right join is used very seldomly because you can you can adjust in a way so i mean that if you you, you can always use left mostly you can use only left join because you can, for example, if you want to preserve uh, all the rows from here, you use left join for this table. Then if you want to join again these two tables and you want to preserve from this part, you can just take this table, put it on the left side, which will be here employee, and the person table put as on the right side, and then it will be a left join. That's why mostly it, most often you will use left join, but sometimes it can be the case that you need right join. But full outer join, it's quite seldom used. I even don't remember if I ever used outer, full outer join. It's mostly left join. And again, this full outer join is, is based on those three, three logical processing phases, which is first it, the cross join or Cartesian product, then it preserves the tables and then it filters out values that are not matching. This would be briefly about the outer joins. So if you don't have any questions for outer join, then let's move to the other types of join, which you can also use. And uh, so those, those which I presented before were the three fundamental types of joins. This one, which comes now, I would say they are kind of a derivative of those joins because they include either in it, it could be either in a join or a derivative of the inner join or derivative of the outer join, left or right, and so on. That's why I... I, uh, I, I mentioned that those are the three fundamentals. And these are just some other types, which usually also I used uh, not so often as the ones I showed before. So self-join, it's quite simple. Probably you can understand it from its name. It's when you join, uh, when you have one table, for example, person table, and then you use this same table to, to join with itself. Um, yes, sometimes such situation can, might, might uh, appear when you have to use the same table in order to join it with itself. It might be the case when, for example, you have, you have, for example, you have this business entity ID in this table and you want to compare or somehow uh, to show the data for you want to show, for example, three and four business entity ID on this part of table to compare them with one and two. And in that case, you can, uh, I mean, you cannot do it within one table. That's why you have uh, uh, use it the same table as a, as a second table to, to join it. So let's see how the case for, for self-join here. Uh, maybe you had before about the idea of, before explaining to you the case, maybe you had about before the, uh, the idea of 
of employees meeting uh, between them, which means that if we have a team of employees, but they are working, working remotely and you uh, working, working remotely, but and not and do not meet and do not meet each other physically uh, and you would like to facilitate um, the the communication and consolidate the team then you can organize physical meetings and here in this uh, in this case uh, i used this idea and consider and what's the case so considering that we are in the we had these pandemic restrictions and working from home HR department uh, want to organize one-on-one -on -one meetings within a team with employees of with employees at the office, and they want to have a list with uh, with the employees uh, with employees we have and the employees with what with which uh, they will have to meet. So uh, let's see <clears throat> what we have here and how I did that. So we have employee. We, we have these uh, four employees, we have a team of four employees, and for each employee, we should have another employee to whom, uh, for example, Ken Sanchez have to meet another employee, and this employee should be Terry, Roberto, and Rob. So we have to make matching between ten, uh, Ken Sanchez and Terry, Roberto, and Rob. What we do, we take uh, this table and match with all these. Uh, with this table and how we can do that. Uh, I take uh, the business entity ID one and I say that, okay, we don't, we have to match, we have to make an inner join and uh, the inner join should have, should match Ken Sanchez with someone who is not Ken, Ken Sanchez, which is, which means that business entity ID should not equal with business entity ID. So it can be, any of these three IDs only for Ken Sanchez. And this is mentioned here. And then uh, the second one, uh, the second, I would say condition here is that it should be, the business entity ID should be for person table, uh, should be smaller than a business entity ID from the second table. And here we have the results. Uh, you can see that we have employee and I uh, employee with the list of employees uh, and the employee to meet. So Ken Sanchez will have to meet with Terry Duffy. Then he meets again with Roberto Tamburello, he meets with Rob Walters. And so we covered the Ken Sanchez from here. Then we go to Terry Duffy. Terry Duffy have to meet Robert Tamburello and Rob Walters. And he already meet here Ken Sanchez. So it, uh, uh, it, it is not repeated here. Otherwise it will be one more meeting for, for, for Terry Duffy with Ken Sanchez. And uh, then we have Roberto Tamburello, the third employee, which should meet with Walt, Rob Walters. And he already, Robert Tamburello had already before met with Terry Duffy and Ken Sanchez. And the last person, Rob Walters, uh, it's not in the list here because he has already met with each of the person before. So you can see here, Roberto Tamburello meet with Ken Sanchez, this one, Roberto Tamburello met with Robert, uh, Terry Duffy, this one, and uh, sorry, uh, Robert Walters meet with Kerry Duffy, and Robert, Robert Walters meet, uh, met before with, uh, with Robert, uh, Rob Walters meet with Roberto Tamburello. So, it was already covered in here. That's why it does, he does not appear here in the list. So that's one example of self-join. Maybe it's a bit confusing when you are looking right now, but you, you can ask questions if 
you don't understand if you didn't understand anything or something is not clear in the way i i've presented here uh, so please ask me or you can also look in more details afterwards when you have the presentation and look into the slides and think about it at least sometimes that's the way how how i do that i have to stay a bit more in order to understand what's in here so that's one example of the self-join uh, let's uh, move to the next type of join it's composite join okay so what the composite join does it actually the main idea is that it joins the tables based on two columns uh, on values from two columns why it happens because uh, we need to have unique uh, because we 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 need to have unique uh, unique value and unique value can be obtained only when we combine uh, values from 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 two tables and especially this uh, might happen when we want to calculate some sum or um, some amount or some sum of of certain i don't know of uh, an, an amount of dollars or something like this but let's see how uh, how it works in this example so we have a product table with uh, with uh, sport with bikes and uh, the size of bike and we have product sales table which shows how many how many bikes were sold and what's the amount and the sales manager wants to see the product sales grouped by product and by size and see the total by by uh, by product and size so <clears throat> So in, 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 in that case, uh, we should join on, on a mountain bike and size, because if we'll join, for example, only on mountain bike, we will not have um, this split uh, of amount be, uh, between the sizes. We would have only, for example, urban bike. For example, in this table, we would have only urban bike, and it will include all the sizes we have for urban bike and we'll show amount only for urban bike but it will not it would not be sp uh, split by by the sizes that's why we use these um, two columns uh, to join and you can see here that i specify that i would like left join because we want to see also the products that didn't have any sales um, and then i specify in my on clause that I would like to, to join these two tables based on two columns, product name and size. And here we have product name and size. And then I group by product name and size uh, in order to see the amount by the total amount by, by, uh, by size and by urban bike. And here you can see the amounts. The, such join is us usually used uh, when you have a primary uh, primary key and foreign key relationship between two columns. Sometimes it might happen. Maybe you had such situation. Um, so uh, sometimes it happens that you have to to join on 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 two columns between two tables. And of course, it can be left join, it can be right join, it can be inner join, depends on what, what exactly you need and how you want to have the results set. Let's move to the next one. Uh, here we have natural join. Uh, actually, actually, natural join doesn't have an implementation, an implementation in, in T-SQL. So you would not be able to use natural join uh, I mean, it will tell you when, if you would uh, try to run the script in in uh, SQL Server, you will not be able because it has no implementation behind this logic. But anyway, I wanted to show you that there is natural join and how it works. It uh, so how it works. It join. It combines two table based 
on the on the same column name uh, uh, that contain uh, that contain uh, that uh, exist in both tables and let's see here the example so we have two tables simply table and pay rates table the business entity id and here we have also business entity id that's a common table so what we want to see actually what accounting department what wants to see is uh, the pay rates uh, for each job title uh, in order to use that for monthly salary calculation so we just instead of for example saying in a join or maybe left join we just say natural join uh, and it takes it it finds out which tables which columns have the same name and for example here we have business entity id and business entity id and it joins those two ta tables based on this column and it doesn't show uh again both columns it shows just the one of those just actually copy of those two and the rest of information so that's how natural join works it's quite simple nothing complicated but um but the only thing with which might uh, not work is when for example you have values which you know that, for example, we would have here business entity ID and here it would be called just entity ID. In that case, natural join would not work because the name is not the same. And that's why this natural join is quite seldom used. So usually you just use inner join or outer joins, whatever you need. Because in that case, if the names are different, you will not be able to join. And that's why it's not so useful and not very often used, but just for you to know that it exists. Okay, let's see the next one. And uh, this is the last uh, type of uh, join, uh, which is other type of join. And these uh, are called theta join joins, um, and it includes uh, equi-join and non-equi-join. Equi-join it's actually an inner join. It means that uh, when you do the join, uh, you specify, you, you mention in predicate that the values should be equal. That, for example, this column should be, uh, the values from this column should be equal with this column. This is how equi-join works. And while for non-equi-join, um, it's when you instead of the equality sign uh, you should uh, have actually an inequality sign something that is not equal and here i used the same uh, the same example we, we you saw before it's self join and it's a good example that's why i use because we have here an inequality while it's an inner join we have this inequality sign and that's why it's called it would be called an non equal non equi join uh, but yeah and you can see that uh, it takes the values that are not equal and here it takes the values for business entity ID, uh, which is it sh also should be not equal and it should be less than the business entity from the second table so that would be the non equi join. It's quite simple, but just for you to know that we have these theta joins, it's more kind of technical name, I would say, because it's actually quite similar to inner join, especially equi join. It's the same, it's the same inner join. While here we just have a non, a non equi join, which doesn't have this equal sign. So that's actually it about the, the types of, of join. And the next topic would be traps of join, but uh, this will be discussed uh, during our second part of, of uh, during our second uh, course. 